The redwood cabin I used to live in Japan, but recently moved to a town somewhere in America. At our town, there was story going around that a cult had a cabin somewhere in the woods near our town, and that they were doing ink and notations, summoning spirits and specters. The usual paranormal stuff, me and my friend Jack, whom I had met when I first came to the town, did not really believe in the paranormal, so when we had an opportunity to do so, we would every so often camp near the section of where the cabin was rumored to be and search around for it. It did not take long since on our fifth time we found where it was, the cabin was completely hideous, it was infested with cockroaches, spiders, and even some centipedes, the left side of the cabin was decayed slightly, the right side had a bit of a termite problem, at first it looked like any old rundown cabin, then we took a second, much closer look, that was when a horrid stench hit us, it was horrible, I gagged and almost vomited, even though I was busy dealing with the stench, Jack was able to get a look at the walls, they were covered with signs, upside down crosses, blood red eyes, and the most frightening part, bodies of people, completely stripped of their clothing and nailed to the wall of the cabin, I thought of calling the police or running, Jack, however horrified he was, insisted on going into the cabin, I'm not believing this. It's probably just so really good deco, he said, as reluctant as I was, I pushed onward, Jack leading with his flashlight, we opened the door slowly, that was when I could not take it anymore, I vomited onto the grass just to the left of the cabin. The reason I vomited was even worse than the stench outside, just in the front door, was a dead dog, it had been butchered and left to rot, worse as it was a local dog that had went missing just two days before we found the cabin, Jack gently pushed the dog to the side so he could get inside. He waited a bit for me and we kept going, inside was like the exterior, only exception was blood red runes replacing the bodies, we came into the main living room of the cabin, it had a big ritual circle, the walls were different too, this time now sporting words such as devil, the beast, our master, the end, and much more terrifying words, such as the runes in the eyes, it was blood red, except this time it seemed like this was real blood, that was when I figured out that the other drawings were simply dried, and it did not look as clear as these, the more I figured out. The worse I felt, if the others were dried, would not that mean these were just made? That was when I had it, I could not take it anymore, I turned to the cabin door, and what I saw I can never unsee, a tall slender figure covered in intestines, blood, organs, and everything gross and putrid. It was blocking the cabin door, that was when I screamed as loud as I could, I turned back to look at Jack, though he still looked like Jack, the man I looked at was carrying a knife, he had a grin on his face, whitening by the seconds, I backed away from him. But he grabbed my arm and dragged me closer, I struggled, trying to get away, but his grip was locked firmly, I watched in horror as the knife was raised, that was when I made a last ditch effort, I kicked him in the forbidden zone, which worked, and I ran toward the direction of the door. That was when I bumped into the slender figure again, now I could make out its face, what I saw was not human, it looked like the face of something out of the deep depths of hell itself, I shambled back a bit, then remembering Jack was there, I moved to the right, I found a window. The only window in the entire cabin, I tried and tried to open it, but it simply did not budge, I turned back in shock as I realized that this was how it was gonna end, I was gonna be murdered in some satanic cabin by my friend, I crouched down, now in tears, and closed my eyes. I waited for the knife to end it all, I waited, but eventually nothing happened, so I slowly opened my eyes and saw that it was daytime, Jack or possessed Jack had collapsed on the floor still clenching the knife, the slender figure was gone, I tried at the window again. And now that it was daytime I saw that it was locked, I unlocked it and opened it up, how silly I thought, that I did not check for the locks, I made a mental note to always do that, and then proceeded to exit via the window, carrying Jack through it first, I ran to our campsite. Put Jack in his tent, and went into mine. I recap on what happened and then put this in my diary, though this was not the nearest near-death experience I have ever had, it was definitely the most extreme and grotesque, I waited for Jack to wake up, and then headed back to town with him. I never told anyone what had happened, and definitely did not tell Jack, who is now my best friend of all time, that he almost killed me. 
Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button to support my work. And as always, enjoy the fear, my dear.